The Dark Side of the Moon is arguably the Pink Floyd's most seminal work. Dark Side is a rich, complex, and melancholy tale of the individual's quest for meaning in a world of existential angst, absurdity, delusion, death, social divisions, and ultimately an overarching evil that one must confront. The album remained on the Billboard charts from its release in 1973 to 1988 for a total of 741 weeks. It is ranked as the third highest selling album of all time and has received acclaim from critics as one of the greatest albums ever made. Dark Side of the Moon is a masterpiece that every lover of music, regardless of their personal taste or style preference, should embark upon. The album cover art has become one of the most iconic and recognized in all of music. A single white-edged translucent triangle centrally placed amidst a completely flat plane of black background. A thin stream of white light proceeds from the left and is refracted within the triangular prism, causing a rainbow to be projected to the right. There are four major aspects of the cover that one must consider in context with one another. The stream of white light, the projected rainbow, the black background, and the triangle. The most important symbolic aspect of the triangle is that it is an equilateral. Due to this triangle's ideal proportions, it has been used by many ancient civilizations to represent the deity, but no tradition more than within Christianity. This perfectly proportioned geometric shape, which is both three-pointed and singular, has been used for centuries in Christian art to symbolize the nature of the Trinity. Furthermore, as the triangle is placed in the center of the field, vertically raised and oriented upward, it signifies an utmost of hierarchical meaning, and the highest attribute of the Most High is God's role as the Creator. Interpreting the prismatic triangle as a creating entity allows for the other three aspects of the cover art to fall naturally into their place. The stream of white light whose source is the sun, an important motif used throughout the album, symbolizes unitary of mind or a singular consciousness. The refraction of light, seen as the projected rainbow, symbolizes diversified creation. And in the Judeo-Christian tradition, it's goodness. Lastly, the field of black represents the chaos or potentiality in the beginning. In summary, the cover art portrays creation. The themes of triangles, sunlight, transcendence, and creation are all played upon with the art on the inside of the album in the form of the Pyramids of Giza. A creation myth of the ancient Egyptians traditionally states that out of a watery abyss, the creator deity, Autumn, later Autumn Ra, and finally Ra, the supreme solar god, settled on the mound, a pyramidal shape of land, and identified with the mound itself, and from the mound the earth was created. The shape of the pyramids also represents a transcendental process from a terrestrial mode of being to an otherworldly ascension. Furthermore, the pyramidal form symbolizes the descending rays of the sun onto the earth, as the pyramid's capstones, called pyramidions, were covered with gold to represent the shining of the sun. However, the brilliant solar shine of the capstone of the Great Pyramid, seen in the inside of the album, can no longer be seen, as the capstone itself is missing, as if it has been eclipsed from our view. A low drone. A heart fades in from the silent black threshold. The album opens in utero, at the beginning of one's life. The second sound that is heard is that of clocks that all too pervasively count down the finitude of a human life. Are we born to die? Perhaps a partial truth. But is this portrayal of life absolute in its truth? Voices speaking of mental instability and the sounds of coins and paper currency grow as the audio symbols representing the absurdity of existence, the mental angst and madness that it ensues, and the toiling away for the acquisition of the abstraction that is money and the divisions it creates. The world awaits. 
Claire Torrey's wailings represent the screams of a newborn child thrown into reality as time begins to devour you. This is a significant theme in existentialism, and what the 20th century German philosopher Martin Heidegger referred to as thrownness, or being thrown into the world. The concept referring to an event of being born, or existing as such, as utterly arbitrary in its nature. As a brute fact, no one chooses when, or where, or to whom they are born, nor any objective reasons as to why they are. We simply are. After we are thrown into the world with no apparent freedom of choice in the matter, or reasons as to why, we are hereafter condemned to be free. In the modal key of E Dorian, with a moderate, slow, walking tempo, the track has a hesitance to it, and a mood of uncertainty. A signature sonic quality during the introduction of the song is David Gilmour's slide guitar, which denotes a degree of optimism. However, this hopefulness turns to a much more unsettling tone at the end of the chorus's chordal progression. opening word and title track, Breathe, echoes a beginning of life scenario as a newborn takes their first breath entering into the world. The continuation of that line, Breathe in the Air, referencing a life-supporting activity that every human will endeavor to do until the day they die, but also an activity that can be taken for granted and unrealized as the individual is indeed living but is not consciously aware or reflective that they are living. Don't be afraid to care. This second line speaks of advice that although fear persistently pervades one in life, it is better to genuinely engage in the enterprise of living than to retreat into a state of nihilistic indifference. This line signifies the paradox concerning the capability of an individual to exist among a collective group and still form their own unique identity. This is particularly evident among one's local group, the family, particularly the individual and their parents. This thought continues into the final line of the first verse. Look around, choose your own ground. This phrase emphasizes choice as a conscious instrument to build one's own life as opposed to letting life happen to you. This denotes the difference between the individual who conscientiously chooses to act their life out and the one who unconsciously reacts to life. How you live, how you fly, smiles you give, and tears you cry. These first two lines of the first chorus convey the full physical and emotional breadth of an individual's life, while the next two lines speak to just how limited and restrictive living as a human being is. This can be taken on the sensory or the cultural level. All you touch and all you see is all your life. On the sensory level, humans only experience a fraction of physical reality, in that visible light consists of less than one one-hundredth of one percent of the total electromagnetic spectrum. Furthermore, we only experience objects of a particular size. Much of reality is too large or too small to see, too low or too high of a frequency to hear, and too fast or too slow to experience within our perception of time. On the cultural level, an individual is constrained by the cultural context in which they find themselves. A human being has essentially an infinite amount of malleable potential that could manifest itself into an untold number of ways. However, given the presuppositions of the culture one is raised in, in a given time and place, the potential person that that individual is able to actualize is restricted by the social pressures and that potential becomes more and more constricted the older one gets. We are very constrained beings and we realize our constraints. 
this harsh realization concerning the magnitude of limitations humans are tethered with is felt in Richard Wright's organ crescendo, like a slap in the face. The second verse equates the human to the running rabbit who digs a hole and in doing so forgets the sun. In these lines there are three rich symbols that interact with one another in a profound manner. First, the rabbit is typically a symbol of fertility or busyness in that they eat and procreate prolifically and although these undertones are evident in the lyric, this rabbit is on the run. In this sense, it is a hunted animal attempting to escape the hunter who we may justifyingly consider as death. The rabbit excavates a hole in the earth in an attempt to save itself retreating from the sun, a universal symbol of truth, goodness, higher being, the self, consciousness, or life general. The sun becoming unseen at the outset of the album foreshadows the conclusion. The rabbit, which is also associated with lunar deities in Eastern folklore, endeavors to save its life through its own works, sheltering itself in darkness, and in a sense losing its life in an attempt to save it. This paradox follows from the Christian tradition that whosoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? When at last the work is done Dumbs it down, it's time to dig another one How you live, how you fly But only if you ride the tide Balanced on the biggest wave in these masterful lines of poetry and the conclusion of the song, the moon is subtly mentioned with its powerful yet invisible influence on the ocean and tides. The moon cycle takes 29 and a half days to complete and consists of four primary phases, the new moon, the first quarter moon, the full moon, and the third quarter moon. The gravitational pull on the moon and the ocean raises the tide up to 50 feet in some places on the Earth's surface. Needless to say, it is a tremendous influence on the Earth. High tide occurs during the full moon, but the very highest tide occurs during the new moon. This lunar phase is exclusively when solar eclipses transpire. Furthermore, the darkest nights always occur on the new moon, and darkness has long since been a symbol for evil, fear, the unknown, and death. Moreover, the ocean has long been symbolic for formlessness or chaos, but does also represent a large body of people. Given these various symbols in their given context at the concluding lines of this song, which leads into the next track in its implicit meaning, we may interpret these last lines to mean, one perceives that the only way to attain success in life monetarily or otherwise, is to conform to a dark influential force which persuades the masses. And through your conformity and under its influence, you fashion your rapid demise. This instrumental odyssey is a fast-paced and angst-driven trip whose theme is the fleeting and illusory attempt to keep up with the pulse of life like you have arrived late and are racing to catch a flight that is leaving you. On the Run features running footsteps, a breathless man, a pounding heartbeat, and menacing mechanical sounds that give the impression that time is evanescent and no matter how much one tries to savor a single moment in their life, reality pulls you forward. The panning from the right to left channel and from the left to the right channel of low frequency synthesized tones give the impression of the rising and setting sun as life seems to outpace you. The spoken words, Live for today, gone tomorrow, that's me, is followed by maniacal laughter and a dissonant backwards guitar.
This gives the impression that there is a dark force or a villain who influences your life unobserved. The song reaches its apex as a building crescendo of motorized sounds and malevolent laughter lead to the sound of an airplane who has nosedived into a fiery collision with the earth. In the distance, we hear the exhausted man's running footsteps and the sound of a ticking clocks as they fade in. All at once, numerous clocks ring out, giving us the self-conscious sense that time is real, pervasive, perpetually passing, and that we are subordinate to it. A digitized clicking sound and heartbeat fades in as the bass and guitar toggle between two different notes. This back and forth movement between pitches represents the consistency of time itself, while the meandering of drums and electric piano characterize that of a carefree, wandering, absent-mindedness. Given the amount of time of this section of the song, it may be difficult for the listener's mind not to wander. In this manner, the listener becomes the direct subject matter of the track. The mind wanders until... An inherent condition of life is that we are thrown into the world with a capacity to become self-aware, but at our outset, we are not. Between 16 and 24 months of age, a child becomes aware that their reflection in a mirror is in fact themselves. Self-awareness in this sense is that they realize they are a being in the world, separate from the world. A similar psychological event takes place as early as one's teenage years, but often in an individual's late 20s when they become aware that their youth is over and it can never be retrieved. This realization is a form of death for the person who experiences it. As they recall the poor choices made and hours upon hours of time wasted, the individual further remembers how in youth they thought of their time on this planet to be unlimited. The sun is referenced again, but not for the source of truth or goodness that it represents, but in a sardonic, careless, and thankless way. On the day the individual realizes their youth has passed and they were not in their youth, preparing for life, it is already occurring, the finitude of their life shifts into focus, and through that lens the realization that time that was slain and wasted is synonymous with the wasting of their own potential and the person they could have been. And then one day you find Ten years have gone behind you No one told you when to run You missed the starting gun Gilmore's guitar solo speaks of the toiling and brooding of thoughts one experiences upon this realization as the solo unfolds through the stages of grief. Anger, disappointment, degrees of self-pity are all felt and expressed in the first half of the wailing guitar solo. But by the chorus section, a bargaining and depression sets in until this grim fact of life is acknowledged and a solution of trying to make up as much time as one can is attempted. <laughs>
The unfortunate reality is that it takes time to try and make up time. And the same sun that, in youth, you took for granted is now a constant reminder of your life's slipping away from you. Research has shown that the release of dopamine when we perceive novel stimuli starts to drop past the age of 20, and that the brain's internal clock runs slower as we age. Thus, the pace of life is perceived to speed up, making for shorter and shorter years. Moreover, when we are 10 years of age, one year is a tenth of our total life, whereas when we are 50 years of age, one year is a fiftieth of your life a much less significant portion. This compounds the relativity of time. Roger Waters takes a line from the American author Henry David Thoreau who stated, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. This quote endumbrates a sad truth about the human condition. We only live to a fraction of our potential, and in moments of reflection we are profoundly aware of it, and with this awareness comes a gnawing and incessant angst. Furthermore, when we have reached the final years and the days of our life, and our time for living has elapsed, who will not feel as though we go to our grave with a song still in us as we know we did not do or say all that we would have wanted? The time is gone, the song is over, thought I'd something more to say. With the Breathe reprise, Darkseid presents us with an end-of-life scenario, when our life's journey has reached its end and we have arrived back to where we began to conclude our final days. In the concluding lines of the song, the Floyd takes the spirit of the English writer John Donne's poem, For Whom the Bell Tolls. An English ancient custom was the ringing of a church bell three times, once before, once upon, and once after one's death. The tradition was established to kneel upon the second tolling. Donne makes the point that when someone dies, humanity and each person that comprises humankind is less for it. As he paints it, any man's death diminishes me because I'm involved in mankind. Furthermore, as we are all subject to death itself, we should not send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Far away across the field, tolling on the iron bell, calls the faithful to their knees. Richard Wright originally composed this song on organ for its religious overtones and spoken words from the Bible were placed over the chord progression. However, the final studio rendering of this song found piano as its primary instrument and non-lexicon vocals performed with an intense degree of emotional output. This final track on side one has to do with death 
not in the abstract, but as one experiences death in real time on their deathbed. The spoken words on the track state, and I am not frightened of dying. Anytime I do, I These words are in stark contrast to the emotional sensibilities of this song. For when that day comes for each of us, as it must, and the realization that we will no longer see another sunrise, feel its warmth, speak to another friend or family member, or have any manner of experience hereafter, who among us will face that moment with complete and total equanimity? As David Gilmour's slide guitar symbolizes our life essence leaving our body, and the vocals begin anxiously and terror-filled, then melt into pleads of forgiveness, sadness, regret, and finally, in the end, necessarily, acceptance. Side one of Dark Side of the Moon takes us from birth to death, centrally themed around the angst one encounters in the face of human limitations, fragility, and finitude. It is a proper frame to place side two within, with its focus on delusory means of attaining a good life, social division, malevolence, and a pervasive evil, underlying and overarching. <laughs> 